Hey guys, what is up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com. Back today for our what is inside of an airplane slash let's destroy an airplane video series. Today we are talking about how to start your airplane using one of two things. We'll either start this airplane using nothing, no keys, nothing but a piece of safety wire, or nothing but a knife. All right, so let's take a look inside the cowling here. Now, before everyone freaks out and says, oh my gosh, people are gonna start stealing airplanes when they watch this video. Well, the whole reason we're doing this video is what happens if you're out there in the back country, you land at an airport, no one else is around, or you're out in some off airport strip, you land out there, you go hiking, you run around all day, you have a great picnic, all that stuff, you go biking, you throw all your gear back in the airplane and you realize, oh man, I don't have my key. How am I gonna get home today? I don't have a key. I can't get this airplane started. Maybe you have a push button starter. Maybe you have one of those starters that you actually have to turn that's part of the magneto switch. Either way, we'll go through how you can do this without having to hand prop the airplane. Really simple to start with. Well, we're going to go ahead and cut off both P leads, all right? The P leads are what ground the mags off. So when you have your key set to off, well, you've actually connected this skinny little white wire in here that's coming off of our magneto and you've connected that wire to ground. So you've grounded out the magneto. So now the spark, when the key is set off, is going to flow through this wire and there will be no spark inside the cylinders rather than the spark jumping across the gap with that spark plug. So if I go ahead and I just snip this wire here and I do the same on the other mag, that is the exact same thing as turning our key to both. Now, when we do this, we won't be able to do a mag check and this is in no way legal to go fly the airplane this way. It's in no way you know recommended. However, if your options are, well, I just landed out on a frozen lake, went hiking around, dropped the key in the snow somewhere, I can't find it. And I can either spend the night out on a frozen lake bed and possibly freeze to death, or I can start up my airplane and go home, well, that's when you might use this little technique here that we're discussing, plus this is just a little bit of systems knowledge for you. The big thing to take away from here is how this airplane could accidentally start on you. Kind of reminds me of that time that we had to turn the tent inside out looking for the keys to the airplane. Not sure why the keys to the airplane went into the tent in the first place. Obviously, there was no one out here that was going to be stealing the airplane anyways. So we've snipped both of our P leads. Now our mags are hot, right? So now the spark cannot travel through that P lead even though the key is set to off, all right? So the magneto switch is set to off. Well, now we're going to have spark coming from both magnetos when we turn this propeller to our spark plugs and our engine will run. Now is where this little piece of safety wire or a knife comes into play. We have right here our little start solenoid or a relay basically. And what we have is this wire coming in here. This wire is coming from the starter button or if you had a switch, a magneto switch, where part of that was start, when the key goes to start, it supplies 12 volts to this little wire here. We then have 12 volts with a lot of amperage coming in through here. And when 12 volts is supplied here, it closes a big heavy switch inside there and allows 12 volts to fly through this wire here. So then we get 12 volts of flow through this wire that goes to our starter and the starter is grounded to the engine and the engine is grounded to the airframe and the airframe is grounded back to the battery. So that completes the circuit. So once we supply 12 volts here and we can take the 12 volts from right here, well, that's going to go ahead and close this switch, allow electricity to flow 12 volts of a lot of amperage through here. And that is going to start turning our propeller. And since we've gone ahead and primed the engine and the key is set to off, but we've snipped both P lead wires. So we no longer have grounding at our mags. Well, both magnetos are going to supply spark to the engine and this airplane should start up. Now it should go without saying that not only is this very dangerous, it's also not remotely legal and it's not even that safe, but it is a valid way to get an engine running. And it's also an important takeaway for us to think about what if those P lead wires broke on their own? What if they came disconnected from the magneto? Well, that means with the key in the off position, the engine can still run. And if the mixture was left to rich and the key was in the off position and one or both of those wires were broken, even just one of them, and somebody turned that prop by hand, well, this engine can run. Even with the mixture in the idle cutoff position, if there's any fuel in the cylinder, it might run through a few blades, or basically turn for a few seconds there before there was a lack of fuel to keep the engine running. So from a safety perspective, very important to go ahead and check these P leads from time to time and make sure they're in fact still grounding out. How we do that is a P lead check. We simply cycle the key from both over to the left mag to the right mag and then momentarily to off when we're at about a thousand RPM or idle. And then we bump it back 
to the right mag and then to left and then back to both. And then we follow the rest of the shutdown checklist. This is on many checklists out there, maybe in your POH. Of course, you always wanna follow your POH to shut down the airplane appropriately as it calls for, but this is one way we can confirm that, hey, if the key is in the off position, the engine is actually gonna shut off. Okay, that's cool. We put the key back to a running position to keep the engine running, and then we shut it down by pulling the mixture, starving the engine of fuel. That does two things that, A, takes fuel out of the cylinder so that if we do have a P lead break, hopefully the engine won't start. There will be no fuel in the cylinder. And then also, takes fuel out of the cylinder so that that fuel, that gasoline, that ab gas is not taking the oil lubrication off the wall of the cylinder, off the engine, and that way the oil will stick there a little bit longer. So next time you start the engine, hopefully there's a little bit more oil on the walls of your cylinder rather than if it had been washed off by fuel. Remember, fuel washes away oil very easily. If you get your hands covered in oil and you wash them in gasoline, again, not exactly approved in this day and age, but a common thing that used to be done 30, 40, 50 years ago. Gasoline is a great solvent to clean off oil and debris. So we like to leave that oil on our cylinder walls. That's why we like to shut down with the mixture for safety and also for longevity of the engine. Now checking those P leads, an important thing that you should be doing from time to time, or better yet, every single time, especially if the POH calls for it or if it is on your checklist. And then as far as jumping this little relay, we'll talk a lot more about relays in other videos when we get into the electrical system on our Piper Cherokee here. We'll actually cut open this specific relay and show you the inner workings of it, how that switch makes contact, how supplying 12 volts right here actually gives you a closed circuit to supply a lot of power to your starter and there's no need to ever press a button or turn a key to start or turn a key to both mags or anything. You can make the engine run without all that. If you're really stranded somewhere and you really have to get home or just to understand that, hey, this is things that can happen. And if you're working on your airplane and you're sitting there with a the wrench and the master switch happens to be on and you bump this with a wrench, and you close that circuit, well, that prop's gonna turn, and even if it doesn't run, just a big piece of aluminum hitting somebody in the forehead really hurts. So important for us to be aware, and that's why we have these little rubber boots that we can cover up and protect those circuits with because we don't ever want a piece of wire to fall on top of that or any sort of piece of metal that could close that circuit for us. That's why we have those rubber boots there to protect that. A lot more videos here coming in this series, guys. If you have any questions on this particular one, leave your question right in the comments below. Link is in the description below to flyatmikealpha.com where there are a lot more videos like this, not here on YouTube. You will find them on flyatmikealpha.com an uh, entire complete series of what is inside of our airplane slash let's destroy this Piper Cherokee, the video series all there on flatmikealf.com along with all of our other awesome courses. If you guys have any questions on any of those, you can reach out to us and any questions on this stuff, comments below or the ask a question button at the top of flatmikealf.com. As always guys, if you cannot fly every day, then fly 8 We'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs>